the AI is giving us a very um, moral, neutral approach to what the data is. Yeah, I think technology in and of itself is inherently amoral, but it becomes a reflection of who we are in terms of how we use it and, and you know, sort of what we feed into it. Mark, I'd like to reflect on morality in the age of uh, AI and what this means. And to do that, um, I'd like to look in both directions. One direction is how AI will affect human ethics and morality. And the other is how ethics and morality apply to AI itself. So let's start with the first. Uh, with the advent of AI and large language models and exponentially increasing in power, what are the implications of that for human ethics and morality? That's a really interesting question. Um, you know, I think I think one thing that AI will teach us is, you know, what we want our relationship with technology to be, and what we want the ethics of of technology integration to look like. So. I think, you know, often, you know, we ask the positivist question as to whether or not we can do something, we, whether or not we can build something and sometimes fail to ask, uh, or at least fail to ask in an appropriate amount of time, the normative question as to whether or not we should do something. And I think AI will, you know, because of its inherent uncertainty and because it is a lot different than any other technology that I think we've ever really developed up until now, because of that inherent level of unpredictability, um, I think it'll hopefully give us some insight into into those problems, and I'm hoping that it sort of it, it helps us reflect on what we want, what it means to be human, and what we want that to look like going forward. Um, you know, especially if AI does some things that maybe are not so good. Uh, what would be some uh, specifications or examples of how that might uh, occur? How AI, something that AI would do which would alter our sense of ethics and morality or change it in some way? Yeah, well, I think I think seeing certain types of perverse instantiations with AI, uh, which are, you know, it's a, it's a Bostrom, a Nick Bostrom idea where AI does the right thing, but the wrong way. So it might sort of follow the guidelines of whatever you program it to do, but it does it in a way that's really weird um, or, or unpredictable. There's a, an interesting example from a study that I think OpenAI was doing uh, with a, a computer game called Coast Runners. And the game is, it, it entails a, 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 you drive a little boat around and ostensibly the goal is to win, win this boat race. But you can also collect points along the way by hitting these different wickets. And so they programmed an AI to play this game, you know, sort of with the intent of the AI trying to win the race. But what the AI ended up doing is it found a little cove with a bunch of wickets and the boat just spun around in a circle to try and hit all the wickets and get as many points as it can mm -hmm. to win the game without actually winning the race. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a, obviously not a dangerous example, but it's where an AI does something that one wouldn't expect it to do, even though it, it kind of, it, it adheres to the letter of the law by, you know, in a way by, by trying to win the game, but not the way that a human would expect it to do. Mm -hmm. So it's an alignment so issue. So, so let me give you another example yeah. that um, AI, uh, in terms of its uh, training, is on billions and billions of, of, of uh, data points. Yeah. And then in its output, it, uh, it, it has a racist or a sexist uh, point of view. Yeah. Uh, at which point the programmers, and especially in today's world, you know, are, are horrified by that yeah. and make some um modifications to that program to uh to stop that from happening yeah uh, so i mean so that's the way it it works in a practical way but right. what, what does that actually mean and can that help us reflect on human ethics and morality because the ai wasn't trying to be racist or sexist it was just reflecting its training right absolutely the ai doesn't have an intent in those instances but the data they're used to train it could have some inherent biases in them. So I think perhaps seeing those sorts of perverse instantiations where, where AI might, you know, be unfortunately racist or, you know, other exhibit some other undesirable types of qualities um, might give us some insight into how we, into what our own biases are. Right. Uh, right. And the biases that would exist in any data that we would give to the AI to train, um, to train on. So, yeah, I think in that way it might 
cause us to become more introspective about, you know, about how we live our lives. Yeah, I, I, I think so. And, and, and about what's available in the public square and the public marketplace uh, of, of, of ideas, yeah. uh, because AI is reflecting that. Right. Not, it, it, nobody programmed it to only find racist comments, but it by by doing that, it may it, it focuses on uh, on, on what the uh, on what the uh, environment really is. Yeah. The AI is giving us a very um, moral neutral approach to what the data is. Yeah, I think technology in and of itself is inherently amoral, but it becomes a reflection of who we are in terms of how we use it and and you know sort of what we feed into it. Good. So let's now flip it the other way in terms of uh, an ethics and morality as reflecting on the AI itself. Is, he, is that even a valid question? When you say morality reflecting on the AI itself, do you mean AI behaving morally uh, or having moral agency? Yeah, yes. And, and to, uh, to uh, understand the concept of ethics and morality as applied to the AI itself, whether it's, it's something that's deterministic by programming or develops in some uh, non-programmatic way? Well, I think to be truly moral, one has to be able to be introspective. And it's not clear that AI is able to introspect about these kinds of things, to be able to reflect on, on what it means to live a good life, uh, to reflect on you know, virtue or to reflect on duty or responsibility toward others. Or you know, perhaps AI could be utilitarian in certain ways by weighing you know, some objective function to to maximize goodness, however you want to define goodness. But I think to be truly moral, one has to have that level of introspection and it might require some level of consciousness, mm -hmm. which, you know, AI may or may not ever, ever achieve. Mm -hmm. um, I think another pressing question related to that is that is, is it moral for AI to be used in something like a lethal autonomous weapon where an AI is actually making a decision uh, to, to potentially take a human life? Is that, does that appropriately respect things like human dignity and um, and you know and all combatants within the within the uh, within the battle space? Yeah, certainly AI in, in warfare and autonomous agents that that have a lethal capability is a real world application of ethics and morality in the age of AI. Yeah. Uh, so, w what are the um, and I know you deal with this. So, what are the categories or the parameters that you think about when trying to drill down on this critical question of AI and warfare from a moral or ethical point of view? Well, you know, I try to, I, I'm certainly concerned with whether or not AI would violate the laws of war, like whether or not, you know, like just war theory and, and things of that nature and, you know, understanding the nature of things like proportionality and, uh, and like discretion in terms of how uh, you know, how AI is deployed and, and in terms of targeting and things of that nature uh, to prevent things like civilian casualties and other, and other things of that sort. But I think also, you know, I'm concerned with AI's lack of an ability to introspect about the nature of war. And I think, you know, that's something war has been around since humans have been around. Um, and it's always been a very human kind of thing or, you know, I mean, other primates wage war as well, but it's, but it's always something that we've sort of had the capacity to introspect on. And I think that that moral weight is something that kind of tamper or it, it tempers some of the uh, some of the worst aspects of war. So because humans have to think about that, because there's a moral injury that's associated with war, it inherently limits war and, and its overall nature. And of course, there's also there are other costs to war. There's you know, there's a, a cost of life, which I think is something that can prevent politicians from deciding to go to war. And so if you remove those things from the equation and if you simply have AIs sort of making these decisions, you know, you, it might lead to politicians not considering those things anymore because, you know, there's no more moral cost to war. There is no more uh, blood cost to war potentially. And so we might see protracted conflict where wars tend to last a lot longer because there's nothing to sort of, uh, you know, to inherently, you know, cause it to... Um, to, to inherently sort of limit or dampen its effects. Yeah, but under those circumstances, you, you would have uh, uh, unpredictability in on both sides of the AI weapon systems, and that would lead to a to a uh, uh, an amplification of the unpredictability in uh, in the warfare. So to me, that sounds more dangerous, not less. 
Oh no, absolutely. I, I totally agree with you. I don't think I don't think integrating AI into warfare to that level is a good thing because I think it will lead to protracted conflict. And I think some people tend to argue that you know if you have AI into war, it lessens the human cost because now you may have you know AI systems sort of fighting against each other. But at the same time, you're going to have these longer fights and these longer wars, and uh, and more and more unpredictability, like you said. Should AI be considered a weapon of mass destruction, like um, nuclear and chemical biological weapons? I I think that that would be a good approach uh, to to trying to regulate AI weapon proliferation. Absolutely. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and comment below. You can support Closer to Truth by subscribing. Closer to Truth is now accepting your tax-exempt donations. Please come to closertotruth.com forward slash donate. Thank you very much for supporting us and thanks for watching.